Season 19 of the Prep Picks Report begins in just 29 days. And this year, the sport begins under the darkening skies of contact-related brain trauma. It all started again with Tuesday's Boston University study and a bold headline that suggests that more than 90% of the brains that were studied indicate some degree of trauma, presumably related to the sport of football. That headline spawning articles like this one, uh, former Charger team physician Dr. David Chow uh, going on record saying he doesn't want his kid to play football. And we're going to talk about that with that with the man right now. Dr. Chow, thank you for uh, coming in on such short notice. A big thank you to your wife for allowing you to alter your plans. Absolutely. Uh, let's just pick it up from there. Uh, you're, you're in a unique perspective. You've seen the worst of football. Is, do you think that jades your opinion as well, how you think the benefits of football? You know, it's possible that I'm biased in the sense that, you know, I'm a doctor taking care of injuries, so I see all the injured football players. But my comment wasn't that I would not let my son play football. I'm not sure if I would right now. He's only four. Thankfully, I don't have to decide yet. I know my wife would say no way. And part of my saying, you know, I wish perhaps he would like baseball or, or another sport better is that clearly all the injuries, I'm not just talking CTE paranoia that's out there, but you know, be it ACLs or, or bone fractures or forearm fractures, shoulder dislocations. Yeah, football is a collision sport. It's riding a motorcycle versus driving in a car. It's more dangerous. Uh, you know, your article came out today. Uh, you have, a, you, you were, you were, under our phone conversation, you have a unique record as it relates to the Union Tribune in that you're a lightning <laughs> rod. You're number one. Whenever your stuff hits, you, you go viral, whether you're the subject or the author, right? Well, you know, I'm very lucky. Jeff Light approached me a couple months ago to do this, uh, and uh, it's a pro football doc website that the Union Tribune is hosting, and his mantra to me was uh, write stories about interest, general interest, not just San Diego, all over football, and whether it's Joe Flacco now disc herniation or uh, CTE or other topics and so been very lucky that way and has some good traffic. But you, uh, the quote that got my attention was as the one I mentioned where you said you might not let your son play or you would have reservations about it. I don't mean to misquote you that you can see it. We're going to play it right here. Um, what's been the reaction to your reaction? Well, you know, I uh, finished work, tried to get home, bathed the kids, and then came here. So I don't know that I've seen much reaction uh, on Twitter or anything uh, out there. Uh, honestly, that was just an honest article that I wrote about how I felt, that I felt like, you know, the concussion researchers had their d agenda, the scientists had their agenda, the NFL had their agenda, the movie makers have their agenda, and the bottom line is us as fans and people and parents don't get to the real truth, and that's what I was trying to get out. But just looking at the methodology of the study, it. Uh, it the headline doesn't really, the methodology and the headline are like worlds apart. 91% of studied brains, well, there were only 200 brains studied. Well, and, and the, there was a conference of American Academy of Neurologists in LA just a week ago, and one of the lectures really was that what the media says and what we as scientists say, and two diametrically opposite thing. What the general public thinks is that if you play football, you're going to get CTE. And the scientists say, well, if you play football, we're not sure that there's an increased risk even of CTE yet. I think the scientists need to do more research and open up their eyes. There's something here, but it's not as alarming as one might think. There was one study that said 35% of all comers in a study, not a selected group like the Boston University one, 35% had some signs of CTE anyways at the time of death. So there's still a delta and a difference, but there's just a lot more we don't know than what we do know right now. Speaking of studies, we we had John Carroll in studio just an hour ago. He referred to another study. Take a listen to this. There was a study in the same Journal of American Medical Association that came out that compared high school to high school. They went back from the 1950s and 1960s and they took a longevity study on the cognitive ability of people that played and didn't play and there was no difference. And that was before football became safer. Is it possible that the media has it wrong again and that, there, that this is much to do about nothing? Is, it, is there a possibility? Well, I, I think, you know, in media, especially in this day and age of getting clicks and whatever, it's, everything is you're either the best in the world or the worst in the world. There's no in the middle trying to do the best that you can. And I think this is where this concussion thing is falling. 
I love Coach Carroll. Worked with him a bunch with San Diego Sports Medicine Foundation. Take care of his kids. Uh, you know, he does a great job. And that study, he's accurate on that study. That is a real study that's been published that uh, f studying 50s and 60s. Now, the counterpoint to that, of course, you can make the argument the way people tackled in the 50s and 60s might be different to the way they tackled today. So we don't know going forward what, what it really is like. But that is a very true study, and, and that's, a, that's, that's real. All right, so uh, NFL is trying to adjust this by changing the rules, making the you know, eliminating head-on head contact and, and the concussion protocol where they whisk a player off and something magic happens in the locker room. One, what is happening back there, and is, and is that all smoke and mirrors just to try to pacify a growing concern, a PR, a PR nightmare? I think they're doing what they can, but it's a very tough problem. The problem is, uh, you, as you know very well, sometimes you can have a concussion that doesn't have symptoms for another hour. So you test the guy, and you put him back in when he's supposed to go back in, and he gets symptoms later, and you and you don't look so good. Or uh, uh, and every concussion is different. There's so much we don't know, and there's even the diagnosis of concussion is, for the most part, subjective questioning a player and asking him to remember things. It's not an objective blood test or, you know, or something that you can just look at and know. We had uh, Larry McCarron in the studio a month ago. He played for the Packers for 12 seasons, had, had some consecutive game streak. Listen to his soundbite about legislating contact out of the football. And I want to get your reaction. The NFL has to be careful about the next generation of players and parents and so forth. But I will say this. I think you have to be just as careful about legislating the violence out of the game. I think it's one of the attractions. It's at the essence of the sport. And so you're, you're riding a, a fine line. In our effort to make the game safer, could we just ruin the sport? The sport? Well, the scary part, and I'm not trying to be anti-football at all, but we don't know right now, scientists don't know, whether it's the, quote, you got jacked hits that lead to bad concussions and CTE, or the thousands of sub-concussive blows on every play at the line of scrimmage that leads to the CTE. So that's how much more work that really needs to be done before we draw conclusions. Before we let you go, we have about 20 seconds left. Mike Williams might miss the year as an insider is, is there somebody in the Charger front office that's getting raked over the coals for missing possibly an injury? That, I mean, you've been you've been on the inside. How how upset is uh, the the front office right now? I think they're very upset that he may or isn't necessarily maybe may or may not be ready to go. We'll know very soon. Does he go on PUP or is he ready to go? And hopefully he'll be ready to go. I mean, you know how it is in a in a front office. There's always hand wringing. Is, is there some physician who's got his head under his desk right now? Well, it's hard to say. First of all, they have a whole new set of physicians, and it's hard to say that he had those symptoms when he was studied. So, we'll see. Dr. David Chow, and for John Carroll, and for Mrs. Chow for letting you be here.